Amen. Pag-pray po natin sila, uh, Pastor Bugtong, sila po ay malilate. They're going to be late uh, because we, uh, they, I think they, they arrived at the apart, the cool apartment late uh, last night as well. Because we had uh, car troubles and hindi uh, na saan maniniwala sa malas pero parang kung may malas man kagabi na yun. But so, <laughs> Uh, nag, sumundu, nagsundo kami gal namin sa sakyan ni daddy tapos pagdating nila pastor uh, wait lang po dyan uh, kunin ko lang yung sakyan ayaw na mag start nakakahiya tawagin namin si sir Alex din nila Montero pagdating doon ayaw din mag start sa airport din nasira so na, napilitan tuloy mag taxi sila ko yung mayaman 15 dollars no sir <laughs> airport to cool apartment so uh, naisip ko si Claude na isama namin for the first time Kaya siguro nangyari lahat. <laughs> so, ano na ito, ka gabi, uh, past 12 na po. So, siguro nahirapan sila mag-prepare. Dapat sunduin namin sila ngayon, but nag-chat siya. Sabi niya, sila na lang daw ang pupunta. Kasi para daw makapag-prepare pa sila, hindi pa sila handa. So, anyway, we'll just uh, go to our Sunday school. And uh, let's all stand, please, and open our Bibles to Nehemiah. Uh, speak it up. Um... Verse number, uh, chapter number six, and we ended at. Uh, let's read uh, 14, 15, and uh, 16. So three verses this morning. Let's read it uh, all together. Nehemiah chapter six, verse 14, 15, and 16. Ready? Read. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sanballat according to these their works and on the prophetess Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. So the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month, and in fifty and two days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all he then that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another uh, Sunday that you've given to us, another privilege, dear Lord, and joy, dear Lord, to come together in the uh, church to be with believers, uh, to have fellowship, dear Lord, to be a blessing to each and every one, but especially, dear Lord, to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth and study your word. I pray, Lord, that as we uh, continue our uh, study in Nehemiah, and as we go through these uh, three verses, I pray, Lord, that you bless us and that you give us uh, um, uh, challenges, dear Lord, that we can see in this, uh, in this uh, passage, dear Lord. I pray that you help me as I uh, uh, preach, give me strength, dear Lord, and wisdom, as, uh, and may the Holy Spirit work freely in our midst, dear Lord, to challenge uh, everyone's heart and to make us, dear Lord, a better Christian through uh, the, re uh, the uh, uh, listening to the preaching, dear Lord. For all these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. So last uh, week we ended at, ver uh, at the verse number uh, 13, and we're going to continue. Uh, we'll not be able to finish uh, the the whole chapter because I want uh, the message to end on a positive note. Uh, that in verse 16, but. Uh, because uh, the following verses of this chapter would be uh, kind of on a negative side. So, um, the title of the message today is God's Mighty Hand Through Godly Men. So God's Mighty Hand Through Godly Men. And whenever we, uh, we have studied last week, and, and even all throughout this uh, book of Nehemiah, we've studied that uh, God works through people who are willing to be used of God. God works through people who are available who will rely on His grace, who will rely on His wisdom and power and strength. And, when, and whenever faced with problems and challenges along the way while we're working for the Lord, God comes through in a mighty way if we let Him do it in our lives. And I'm not saying that we, God needs permission to uh, interfere in our lives, but, uh, but it is a blessing and God blesses those who rely upon His grace. God blesses those who rely upon Him. And in this passage today, we are going to see the realization of the mighty work of God. The realization of, the, of, the, of everything that God has been doing through the life of Nehemiah and even through the life of the people that he is leading. And all of the things that they have worked for, the challenges that they have faced, throughout all these things, in the end, God comes out victorious. God comes out 
glorified. And then we have learned that up to this point, nobody was able to complete the rebuilding of the wall. They were not able to um, endure the mockery, the ridicule, the threats, the personal attacks, and even the threat to their lives they, because they relied on their strength and in their own intellect. They may have started previously in, in the previous attempts to rebuild the wall. They may have started humbly. They may have started because they were challenged of God. They may have started because they saw the need and tried to act upon it. But somewhere along the way, they lose their focus on God and trusted in their own strength and might. Therefore, that is the reason of their failure. That's why up until now, Nobody was able to do it. And the walls have been in ruin for over a hundred years. But today we have read the, uh, uh, our uh, text that the wall was eventually finished. Now this time it was different. It was different because of the man who started this effort. It was different because of the man who trusted the Lord along the way since the beginning until the completion of the wall. And it is very, and, and we, we sometimes overlook it. But leadership in the work of the Lord is very important. Well, we, we heard the saying, everything rises and falls on leadership. And there's a lot of truth into that. Because however uh, sincere the people are, if there is a corrupt leader, if there is a leader who is uh, not relying on God, it will eventually show in the congregation. That's why as members of the church, as believers, it is our duty, it is our responsibility to pray for our leaders, to pray for our pastor, to pray that they will continue to be deeper in the Word of God, that they will continue to love God with all their hearts, to trust the Lord in everything that they do, because in return, the church itself will benefit. And if the leader is corrupt and, and has been corrupted by, by uh, things of this world and wrong doctrines or these things, it will hurt the church as well. That's why there's no use if the members are going to fight the leadership. It's no, there's no use if the members are going against the pastor because leadership is very important. And we see here that the difference in all of these things, in the efforts of previous efforts of rebuilding the wall, was a leader who was willing to follow the Lord no matter what. And we saw that last week, how, how determined he was, how uh, uh, his resolve to do it, because he was attacked personally in the end, because the, the, the enemy saw that it was about to be done, the wall was about to be finished, and they really had to, to uh, uh, pitch one last effort to stop it. That's why they attacked him personally. We saw, we, saw him, we saw them change from general persecution to a personal attack on the leader. And we saw them persistently do it, persistently try to offer him friendship. But he saw right through that. They tried to destroy his reputation. They tried to destroy his testimony. And even to his own people, they're trying to do that with an open letter. But he didn't even count his own reputation more important than the work of the Lord. And, that, and it takes that kind of leader for the work of the Lord to be successful. And we must be thankful to the Lord if we have that kind of leader. If we don't, we have to pray that our leader will continue to uh, go, uh, strive towards that kind of leadership. That no matter what happens, Happens, he will continue serving the Lord no matter no matter what the devil throws at him but even if we look at that uh, uh, we look for that at, uh, in our leader we should also look for that and expect that of ourselves okay even though there's strong leadership on the other hand if there is a very weak membership the leader cannot do anything that's why as the leader grows, as the leader obeys the Lord, members has, have to follow through. Members have to do the same. Members have to be deeper as well. Members have to be stronger. Members have to be determined. And the workers of the church, uh, people who are working for the Lord, have to ha uh, needs to have the same resolve to follow the Lord and obey the Lord no matter what. Because if last, last week we saw that if these people believe the open letter and if these people were affected by that open letter they will turn their back on Nehemiah they will they will value their lives because if Nehemiah's head uh, was was is, uh, uh, being sought after by the king then the king could could very much as well kill them as well but these people did not get affected because of that and they were able to uh, to finish the wall eventually now um, that they didn't only persistently offer him friendship, but they also tried to make him compromise. And a leader who's compromising will, lead the ch uh, will, will eventually lead the church to be a church that is not uh, in the will of God. And, and, the, and God is not glorified. And if, 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 I don't know if you have realized that. If a leader is very much willing to compromise on a lot of, a lot of doctrinal issues, a lot of uh, uh, ungodly fellowship, then we, we should not expect 
uh, what they call this, a faithfulness to the word of God from the members. Because if we see our leaders being, if, our, if we see our leader being uh, a friend of the people who are, who are going against the will of God, who are going against the word of God, he, uh, we will also not have that kind of resolve to separate and, and obey the will of God. That's why if they saw in Nehemiah that even though he's about to be killed, that even though he was offered safety just to compromise and commit sin, and they saw that he did not take that, that was a challenge to the people that if our leader was able to do that, we should as, uh, also just continue focusing on the word and not compromise and that is the very difference uh, uh, in, 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 in all of the efforts from, from the beginning all the failed efforts until now and all of these things that Nehemiah did all of the challenges that they face all of the problems that they face has led to this passage the passage of victory and even though this passage is just about three sentences uh, three sentences three verses and then after that more challenges ahead but um, I, I would like us to focus on these three uh, things and, and see how mighty the, the, uh, uh, the Lord is. And, and if, if time may permit, we'll, we'll take a look back on, of, of all the things that they have uh, gone through uh, until this time. So let's pick it up at verse number 14. It says here, My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sanballat according to these their works, and on the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets, that would have put me in fear. Now, Nehemiah is consistent in this one thing. He's consistent in praying to the Lord. He's consistent in bringing all of his problems and worries to the Lord. So he said that, My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sanballat according to these their works. Because Nehemiah knows that even though even though it seems that nothing is happening, even though it seems that these people are, 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 are keep, uh, uh, keep trying to hinder the work of the Lord and the God is not doing anything about it, Nehemiah knows that the Lord can see what's happening. And if the, even if the Lord does something about it or not, Nehemiah knows that the Lord knows how to take care of him, his people, and even his enemies. Now, we see here that we admire Nehemiah for for. Uh, coming to the Lord and resisting all these temptations. But as I was uh, 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 reading and studying about these things and reading uh, different uh, uh, opinions about this, uh, this chapter 6, we, saw, we see here that what Nehemiah did was just on a small scale compared to what the, our Lord Jesus Christ had to endure during his time. Because Nehemiah was able to uh, say no to the friendship of this world. Nehemiah was able to say no to uh, 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 stopping the work that he's doing. Nehemiah was able to say no to compromise. But compared to what Jesus Christ had to say no to, we, we see, we see how, how greater that was. Nehemiah, uh, they told Nehemiah to come down from the plain of Ono, but he refused for, for he was doing a great for, work for God. But Christ was told to come down from the cross, but he refused that because he was doing the greatest work for us. Nehemiah's uh, reputation was, uh, was destroyed. They slandered him, but he did not go down to their level. Christ, uh, people did that to our Lord Jesus Christ as well, but instead of debating and fighting with them, he instead just spoke the truth in love and in grace. They offered Nehemiah safety just to compromise, to commit sin. Well, if you, if you, if you remember that Christ was offered the same thing by Satan himself, but he refused to commit sin. He refused to compromise even in the face of, 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 of great uh, benefits and power that, 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 uh, that he, uh, uh, there is being offered. Now, Satan will throw everything at you. Satan will throw everything at us, and we have seen that in the life of Nehemiah. He doesn't only throw everything at the congregation. He throws everything even to the leaders of the congregation. That's why we have to be careful. That's why we have to be discerning. Uh, uh, one example of discernment is uh, Brother Deo. At the last minute, last night, he didn't go with us. I think he knew what was going to happen. So that is discernment. Or, wala lang siya pakisama either way. So, tignan po. <laughs> but, pero sabi ni Claude, discernment daw yun. Kaya hindi siya sumama. Alam niyang mag, magkakaroon ng problema. But, we have to be very much discerning. Because when Satan throws everything at us, his only goal, just to remind everyone, his only goal is for us to stop working. And even a small delay in the work, he will consider it a victory for himself. That's why, as like Nehemiah, instead of dealing with the problems and stopping the work of the Lord, just give it all to the Lord and let the Lord deal with these problems for us. And, and the Lord is someone who, can, who, who we can really rely on and we can really uh, trust. The verse says here that, according to these works, and on the prophetess Noadiah, 
And now uh, we saw last week, but it was that it was not this guy who was o- offering uh, him to compromise. But Noadiah seems to have the same mission as uh, Pangalan ng Shemaya uh, from last week. And not only that, and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. Now through this prayer of Nehemiah, we can see that not only one priest or one prophet tried to make him commit sin. But it says here, Noadiah and the rest of the prophets. We know that the enemies outside the walls were, uh, were, were persistent. They're trying to, to get him to stop. They're trying to get him to uh, stop the work of the Lord. But w- what we realize in this prayer of Nehemiah, that even the people inside the walls that were trying to stop him were persistent as well. Not only Shemaiah, but this guy, uh, Noadiah as well, uh, the prophetess, and also even all the prophets. And all of these people who he must have considered as friends, who he must have considered as people who will be helping him, were people who tried to put fear in his heart. And sometimes uh, this, all, all of these things come even from the very church of the Lord. Put fear in your heart. Instead of encouraging people to continue and keep working on the Lord, they're going to make them consider all the negative sides of, of obeying the Lord. Uh, maybe you should just stop doing it because they're, they're trying to hurt you. Stop doing it. They're putting you in danger. Just stop. Just, just, keep, just, just uh, uh, give in to their demands. Now, you should not expect that from people inside the church. People inside the church should be people who are encouraging the leader. No matter what happens, we're behind you. We're going to support you. And as long as you're following the will of God, we're going to be here praying for you and, 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 do, and, and being there every step of the way. Instead of the very people who are putting fear in the heart of the leader, who's putting discouragement in the heart of the leader. And we have seen that happen in this church over and over again. Uh, few, uh, during this past few years. We've seen people come here just trying to destroy uh, a fellowship, trying to destroy unity, and they attack even directly our pastor. And we knew that this is the work of the devil. And this is the work of the devil that, that he's trying to discourage the pastor, destroy his testimony, or even uh, 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 destroy our trust towards him. But the Lord always came up victorious in the end. Why? Because we're willing to obey the will of the Lord. Now, Nehemiah knew here in this prayer that if God was able to take care of him, to take care of the people and to lead them into building this wall, he is much more able to take care of these people who are trying to stop the work. And he did not worry about them. He just prayed to the Lord and then continued on working. That's why here in verse 11, it says, uh, uh, verse 11, that's why he knows how, uh, before we go to the next point or the next verse, that's why we, he knows how to uh, place his trust on, uh, upon the Lord. And this is something we have to learn from him. Uh, in Psalms chapter 56, verse 11, it says here, In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do to me. You know, the greatest of men in this world can only hurt you physically can only hurt you maybe emotionally, maybe can, 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 can take away the material things in your life. But if we trust in the Lord, His grace will be more than sufficient than all of these things that they can do to us. Psalms 91 verse 5 says here, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by, na- uh, for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Because this is the challenge of the Lord to us. If you really trust the Lord, you should not have fear in your hearts. No matter what is happening, even when you're sleeping, even when you're sleeping, there's a lot of danger around you. There, there's a, a danger of people uh, uh, be, uh, uh, robbing your, your house, killing you, or, or, or whatever things that they are planning to do evil upon you. But a family or a person who has placed his trust in the Lord can sleep well at night, can have that peace that the Lord can take care of them. Psalms chapter 3, verse 5 says, I laid me down and slept. I awaked for the Lord sustained me. This is the kind of trust and peace we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our our song, the song says a while ago, there's a peace in my heart that the world never gave. And and on all the material things and all the things that we can gather in this world can never give us this peace that we can get by trusting on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why if you place your trust in money, in material things, and security in those things, it will never buy you true peace in your life. It can never buy you a good night's sleep. That's why only trust in the Lord, complete trust on Him, complete reliance on Him uh, can give us this peace in our hearts. That's why we should never fail to trust the Lord in the things, even in the face of danger, even in the face of the things that we are experiencing in our lives. Now, uh, it says here that 
we, we, we learn that Nehemiah will keep working. And because of all these things, brings us to verse number 15. It says here, So the wall was finished in the 20th and 5th day of the month of Elul. Yun yun. In 50 and 2 days. We learn that the wall was finished in only 52 days. This wall was in ruins for more than 100 years. And it only took them 52 days to finish it. Only less than two months to finish the whole wall. Now, because of this verse, I would like us to look back. Not, not, not again at the things that the enemies were doing. Because from chapter 1 until this verse, we have been focused on what the enemy has been doing uh, to the people of God and to the man of God. But I would like us to focus on what kind of uh, leader Nehemiah was. Why were they able to do this in a matter of only 52 days? And the first one here is the very first thing we learned about him. He was a prayerful leader. And I would like to, to, again, focus on that. And I know that I have preached this in, in the very first preaching, but let us uh, refocus on that. Nehemiah was able to do this with, with God's help because he was a prayerful man. We saw that in chapter 1, when he learned that the walls were in ruins, and in chapter 2, verse 1, it was a span of four months. He was praying for as long as four months for God's wisdom, for what God has planned, and for four months, his prayer was even uh, twice longer than the very building of the wall itself. The building of the wall was 52 days. His prayer was four months. This, this uh, will help us realize that the spiritual battle is so much greater than the material battle. And, 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 and a person, a, a believer or a Christian who is going into battle that is not ready spiritually will fail. A person who will go to battle and did not go in on, uh, 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 on her knees or his knees first and pray to the Lord will fail the battle. And Nehemiah prayed for four months for, a, for, a, for building a wall for 52 days and he prayed and prayed and he was ready spiritually. In those four months, God was working in his heart. In those four months, God was working in his mind. In those four months, God was working on his plans and all the things that they had to do. That's why no matter what the devil threw at him during the working of the wall, he did not even look at that. He kept on working the wall. Why? Because he was ready spiritually. And if you are a believer who goes on your knees, Praise to the Lord, ask wisdom from Him, removes all your self-sufficiency, remove all your self-dependency, remove your pride, remove all your uh, or knowledge, your intellect, and rely solely upon the Lord. That is when you win the battle. It's not when you go to battle and, and, and debate and fight for the truth. It is when you're on your knees and re completely reliant of, on God. That is when the battle is already won. And the material battle will, will just be a manifestation of what you, what you did with the Lord personally. If you, are, if you are in Him, no matter how great the battle is, a person who is spiritually ready like Nehemiah and armed with the power of God and, he, and in his might, it will not matter what the devil will throw at us. This is why David was able to defeat Goliath. Why? He relied upon the Lord. This, was, this is why Daniel was able to say no to all these compromise and pleasures of the, the world. Why? Because he relied upon the Lord. This is why Gideon and his 300 men were able to de defeat uh, 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 thousands of enemies. Why? Because they obeyed what the Lord told them to do. And this is why Paul over and over and over again was victorious on all the battles, all the persecution. Why? Because they were obeying, dependent, and, and relying upon the grace of God. And I don't know about you, but by now we must realize that all of these things that God has called us to do, the work of the Lord can never be done apart from the grace of God. Can never be done upon, uh, 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 apart from the complete reliance on the Lord. Because if, if you start off, even if you start off humbly and, and, and some, some lo somewhere along the way, you lose focus and trust on yourselves, you will fail. That's why we, we learn here that here in Nehemiah, uh, in the life of Nehemiah and even in the lives of Bible characters that they were able to succeed because they trusted upon God and because of they obeyed the Lord. We read our Bibles every day. 
We read these stories almost every day in our lives. We hear preaching over and over again, and there's always one common denominator. They pray, they ask the wisdom from God, and they rely upon that. And if we will not learn how to do that, we will always fail in the battles that we are facing. We'll always fail in the temptations. We'll always fail if, in, in, in face of danger. We'll always uh, uh, run away like cowards. We'll always hide away like cowards. And like these people, even in the face of death itself, they're willing to go for the Lord. Why? Because they were spiritually prepared. That's why we, we uh, uh, first thing that we, we see here is that Nehemiah was able to do this because he was prayerful. How is your prayer life? Do we still really pray to the Lord? Or is, is prayer just something that we had to, uh, Parabang, it's, it's just something on our to-do list. We check it, we pray, we check it, and we're done. No, we should live a life that is uh, full of prayer. Uh, when, when I say a life of, full of prayer, it doesn't mean that you close your eyes every now and then, but a life that is dependent upon God, completely upon God. Why? Because when He saved us, he, he, he already gave us the greatest power uh, we can have, which is the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we neglect that completely. That's why we do the work of the Lord powerless. We do the work of the Lord in, in our own mind. And that and, and in Galatians, Paul told them they were foolish for doing that. Uh, have you been saved in the Spirit and then walk in the flesh? How does that work? If you get saved in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, completely rely on the Spirit, and whether we like it or not, if we do that, uh, if, if we keep on doing that, if we keep on obeying the Lord every day of our lives, we're going to see how mighty He is in our, in our lives. That's why Nehemiah was able to see this, was able to see the completion of the wall in just 52 days because of constant prayer and relying upon the Lord. Not only that he was prayerful, but we also learned throughout these six chapters until they finished the wall that he was a person who was determined. He was a person determined to finish the work. People said it couldn't be done. When they started, they laughed at him. When they were in the middle, uh, uh, the halfway point of building the wall, uh, even the very own people of God caused him problems. It, 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 it made him a bit angry in the first place, and the people were tired. They're trying to stop the work. They're trying to uh, refocus on just uh, 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 getting resources for themselves, and some people were even taking advantage of that. But through Nehemiah's determination, none of these things stopped him from working. And we should have this kind of determination for the Lord. And that is something that I, I emphasized last week, that we should decide that whatever happens, I'm going to continue to work for the Lord. Even though they're going to attack me personally, even though these things will happen, I already know these things will happen, but I have decided that I will continue working for the Lord. Nehemiah was not only a prayerful leader, but he was a, very, a leader that is determined. He endured a lot of things. He endured friendship. He offered a friendship, compromise, and all these things. Why? Because he knows that, uh, the, the God is, he knows that determination, he knows that the Lord will help him to continue to do this. Now, I don't, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I don't know how the Lord has been working in your life or in your heart as we continue to study these things. But we see here that as long as we are determined, for the Lord, not for ourselves, not for our own consumption or our own glory. As long as we are determined, however great the trial is, the Lord will give you greater power or grace or determination to overcome it. Because if Nehemiah was there praying for four months, I'm sure that he, if the Lord allowed him to see all of these things that they will throw at him, he may say that, I'm not willing to do that. I'm not a person who's able to overcome all of these things. And even if you look back at your lives, all the trials that you have been through and the, uh, all the things that you have been victorious about, you're going to see, I never would have thought that, that I can overcome all of these things. Why? Because at the, at the very moment of these things, when we rely upon the Lord, God then empowers us to overcome it. He will never give us a trial or, 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 or a challenge that He will not give us uh, uh, enough strength to overcome it. The reason why we fail, the reason why we stop, the reason why we, we, we stop working for the Lord is when we face with trials, we rely upon ourselves. We get our own strength, our own mind, and our own, uh, uh, and our own knowledge. Now, they, 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 Satan threw everything at Nehemiah, and, and Satan will throw everything at you as well. Don't say that I'm just a, a, a member, I'm just a, a someone who comes every Sunday, and I don't even do a lot for the church, but even though... Satan can use you and he will throw everything at you. He, will, he can use uh, the things that, are, that even look good. Because when Satan offers you something, it will not look bad. 
It will not look bad. Because if, if these things look bad, there's no incentive for you to take it on anyway. All of these things will look good. All of these things will look that, oh, I can do this while serving the Lord. Oh, I can take this while doing this for the Lord. All of these things are good, but all of these things are compromised compared to the perfect will of God. That's why, like Nehemiah, we have to be, discern, we have to be able to discern what's right and what's almost right. Because all of the things that Satan will throw at us will look almost right. Uh, this job is okay. It will feed the family. It will give us good comfort. It will, uh, it will even help us help a lot more members. But if that is not the will of God in your life, that is still wrong. No matter how good it looks, no matter how good it seems, if it will hinder you or just make you slightly ineffective in the work of the Lord for your life, it is not what, you, uh, it's not what the will of God in your life is. That's why uh, whenever, every Saturday I try to have a conversation with uh, Ponlu because he's the one going with me. I ask him, what do you want to be when you, uh, when you graduate? He said he wants to uh, play Mobile Legends. I'm just kidding. He wants to uh, uh, be a teacher. But he said, but if I become a teacher, I know that, a public school teacher, I know that I will be busy even Saturday and Sunday. So I told him, I can tell you right now that that's not the will of God. No matter how good it seems, no matter how good your intentions are, you want to teach your pe uh, the kids, you want to help them uh, uh, be successful in life, that's good. But if it brought you away from the will of God, it's not the will of God in your life. It is not right, no matter how good it looks like. If it will, if it will take away your service to the Lord, if it will take away Sunday, especially when you, when you go to your church, it is not the will of God, no matter how good the mani, Nabani is, no matter how good the benefit was. That's why we have to have this kind of determination. If we don't have that, napakadali nating matukso sa mga bagay sa mundo na ito. Marami pong bagay na pwede nating gawin instead of serving the Lord because we are not determined. And Satan will throw these things at us, okay? Uh, this, throw all of these things uh, that looks good, but will, will uh, bring us away from, from the Word of God. Not only Nehemiah had this kind of determination. Almost everyone that God used in the Word of God had this kind of determination. Because they know in the long run, the Lord will be glorified. That's why Paul was able to do this. Paul was able to uh, endure all these things and even go back to the same places where people tried to kill him. Why? Because he knows that his life is not important to him as long as he was able to glorify the Lord. That's why he says in Acts 20:24, 20, uh, But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord, uh, Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. That's why even though Paul was kicked out from city to city, was put in prison, he knows that he's about to be killed. What he does is he takes every opportunity to, 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 to share the gospel to anyone that he comes across with. Why? Because he knows that his calling is to share the gospel to people. That's why no matter what they do to him, he will use that situation as a gospel opportunity. They, they place him in prison, he'll share the gospel there. They, place it, they kick him out of this city, he goes to the next city preaching the gospel. Kick him out of that city, he goes to the next city, goes into the synagogue preaching the gospel. Why? Because he's determined that I will, go, I will continue to obey the Lord. This is what he has called me to do. No matter what men do to me, I will continue to preach the gospel. We have to have this kind of determination. Not only that, he's determined, prayerful, he, was all, he also has discernment. And he saw right through all of the things that the devil threw at him. He saw right through them. And if we don't have this kind of discernment, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to fail. We're going to take all of these things that the, that the devil uh, is offering us. Now, one good thing that I like in our, uh, what do you call this, in our uh, reorganization, because we should not, even though we do have discernment, we should not take it as a soup uh, uh, it is supernatural because it's what God gives us right? it's, not, it's not coming from us but we should not think of it as magic parabang uh, sa worldly words uh, uh, parabang gut feeling Ito kasi yung, this, may, this is what my gut is telling me this is what I'm going to do it's not our gut it's what the Holy Spirit is telling you right? we should learn how to differentiate that it's not that I think ko ito yan ito ang gagawin ko that's why we have to be careful it's just our gut or it's really the Holy Spirit who is uh, telling us that's why as much as possible like Nehemiah he was not only discerning he was also a man who used his common sense a lot because right? God gave him 
brain between his shoulders. And he uses that. That's why remember when he arrived at Jerusalem, he didn't immediately gather all the people and say, hey, come on, let's rebuild the wall. The Lord has told me to rebuild the wall. Let's start rebuilding the wall. He didn't do that. He first surveyed the place. He first went there and looked around and looked what are the needs, what are, are the things that I heard real, uh, 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 how, how bad was the damage, what can we do first so that our plan will be more effective. That's why in our church, one thing that I liked since our uh, reorganization was we, we uh, tried to uh, uh, tighten up our mission uh, 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 program. We placed uh, Preacher Wilson and Preacher Alex uh, in charge of this thing to, to really see if the people that are, we are supporting is really deserving of the hard-earned money of the people of God and, and, and being given to the church and being uh, uh, given to the missionaries. That's why we try to learn if these missionaries are really working faithfully in their field or do they have the same convictions we have uh, in, in, in uh, major doctrines in the Bible. Of course, we're all, always going to have our differences, but are they faithfully doing? Are they not just fabricating mission letters? right? Because if you go to uh, mission boards in the Philippines and you read all the Cambodia mission letters re report and you add all of those things uh, all of those numbers of people that are saved what you will think that cambodia is already a christian country there's, there's no more buddhist here why because every month hundreds being saved every thousands being saved surrendering to the bible school uh graduating being a pastor but i don't see them anywhere at all now we we have seen people who graduated from uh, sihanokville graduated for three years Bible school they come to Shimrip what, do, what are they now tuk tuk drivers they're not even attending church right what are they doing they're not even involved in the work of the Lord why because there are missionaries who even use the mission field as business that's why as, uh, as, as really uh, 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 people of God who, who has this who has discernment and will use our uh, and will be responsible in the things that God is giving us we should be able to know these things first before just going all in and helping people that's why I, I admire those uh, 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 missionaries who goes on mission trips to see what's really happening but what's better if is they if they go unannounced because if you go announced then it's really easy to fabricate a ministry and people who are saved and people who are serving the Lord but this is the truth in this is uh, this is the truth and this is what's happening today uh, mom Kimi told us when we were uh, uh, having conversation with her she's she's the one who's reading all of the mission letters uh, in, in uh, uh, Bethany before and they were really blessed of all these things that are happening but when she came to Cambodia she just cried she said why because those things that I read were not true and, 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 and although I hate to say that, but everyone has to know that, that people are fabricating all of these things just to impress supporters, just to impress people back home who are supporting them when none of it is true. Last night while we were waiting for Pastor Bugtong, I was talking to the wife of Pastor uh, Joseph De Vera. She said that, uh, but they, were, they, they work in a province. She said that people there, they easily receive the gospel, but they're not really saved. That's what she said. And she says that it takes years before we can even say that there's one conversion. And even after that, you're not really sure. And, and I said to myself, they're honest missionaries. They're not missionaries who are just fabricating people. They raise their hand, they're saved, they're going to heaven. Because whether we like it or not, whether we like to admit it or not, if we do that kind of ministry, people raise their hand and give them assurance you're already going to heaven, we're just actually pushing them closer to hell. Why? Because they wholly believe, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, no matter what. They haven't repented, they haven't turned their back on their idols, and during Pichum, Pichum Ben Day, they're still going to the temples, offering to the idols. They were not really saved. But here comes a missionary, giving them all these things, preaching, asking them to raise their hand, repeat a prayer, just like some Catholic. Uh, I, I, I saw a uh, I saw an article this morning. It's like the Baptist Rosary, uh, the magic prayer. We repeat this prayer, you're saved. Everyone's saved. Now, that's why if you count that, it even include all the other denominations here declaring people saved. I believe Cambodia is already a Christian nation, but I don't see churches everywhere here. That's why Nehemiah was, was, had used his common sense sense enough to go there look at the real situation before going all in and helping what remember when he came to jerusalem he had the money he had the resources he can just go in and build the wall but he tried to know that first and not only that he uses common sense but as i was as i told you he uses his discernment as well for things that are really blurry that's why that's why uh, this comes 
from, uh, from his uh, attitude of being prayerful. And this kind of knowledge and wisdom only comes from the Lord. Proverbs 1 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. James 1 5, my life verse says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. That's why discernment is only a prayer away. It's only dependence upon God. And God promised that He is going to give us the wisdom if only we ask Him. But I don't know why people is too proud not to ask the Lord of these things. I'm smart enough to decide. I'm good enough to decide. I know what's good for me. Lord, I don't want to bother you. I know you're busy with all of these millions of people so you're taking care of. I'll take care of myself. I don't have to rely upon you. When the Lord says, just ask I'll give you the wisdom. This is what Nehemiah has been doing. He's been tapping on the richness of the wisdom of God. And that's why he, has been, he was able to do these things. Not only that, but he was also calm and composed. Remember, he got mad uh, at the people because they were taking advantage of each other. But what did he do? He prayed, composed himself, and then talked to the people. And that we are also going to benefit if we have that kind of leader. Okay, we should, That's why we should always pray for that kind of leader. Which brings us to the believe last verse today it says here wait my notes are, are uh, nagulo verse number 16 I believe it says here and it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof and all the heathen that were about us saw these things they were much cast down in their own eyes for they perceived that this work was, the, was wrought of our God. Now, because of these things, God worked through the mighty leadership of Nehemiah. And it was such a great work that the enemies only, was only brought into one conclusion, that this was the work of God. Now, we saw how great a leader Nehemiah was. And I don't, I don't know if there are much, many more leaders today that are as great as Nehemiah. But how, how, however great Nehemiah was, at the end, it was still the glory of God in display. Because it's not about how great the leader is. It's about how great the God is behind that leader. If you see this, parabang nahirapan na ako mag-English. Kahit nagaano ka galing si Nehemiah, hindi pa rin siya yung nag, naging, uh, yung, yung, uh, balik tayo sa English. Hindi pa rin siya yung na, uh, na feature. Hindi pa rin, the wall is rebuilt, starring Nehemiah. Hindi the ball was rebuilt. This is the work of the Lord. Why? Because maaangat ka lang naman kung iaangat mo yung sarili mo. Kasi kung si Nehemiah, ka iaangat niya lang sarili niya, napakadali. Because he did everything right. In the end, he can just lift himself up, say a one sentence, and people will look at him instead of God. But no, it's not about how great the leader is. It's, it's, it's always about how humble he is. Kasi kahit, even if Nehemiah was not great, he can still feature himself in rebuilding this wall. Now today, people are not as great as Nehemiah. They're not even good leaders, but they're featured in their churches. They're the ones being, it's their faces on the walls. Not, I'm not talking about a small portrait. I'm talking about a whole background of puppet, the face of the pastor, preaching here, his face behind him, his face on the TV, and all these things. Now, if, if, uh, if, if, uh, if a pagan will come in, oh, are we worshiping? Is this uh, worshiping this guy? Is he, is he like Kibuloy? Okay. During his birthday, starring this guy. He's not even as great as Nehemiah, but he has the audacity to lift himself up. Right? Now, now even if God uh, uses you as mightily as he uses Nehemiah, if you don't have the desire to be lifted up, you will not be lifted up. Okay? God's glory will be displayed at the end. That's why no matter how great he was, people never said anything about him. All they, all they said was it, it was wrought of our God. It is God. Nehemiah never liked to be uh, 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 famous. It was not his desire. During the four months, I don't think he prayed, Lord, after rebuilding this, I hope that people will recognize me. Never prayed about that. Just give me wisdom, Lord. Use me mightily. I see the need. I'm going to do something about it. Use me mightily. And if the Lord lifts you up, praise the Lord. And if he doesn't, praise the Lord. 
That's why we need this kind of leader, a leader that is humble enough not to take any credit for what happened. No matter how great he is, I don't know if any one of us will be used by God this mightily, but if we have a, 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 a proud heart, if we have a covetous heart, if we have a heart who, who loves the limelight, no matter how little God uses us, we will try to find a way to magnify that in front of the people. That's why Nehemiah instead did the same, the, a different thing. He, 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 he was used mightily by God, but instead he magnified the glory of the Lord and, God, uh, and the Lord himself. And this is so far away from the leaders today. Proverbs 17, 19 says, He loveth transgression that loveth strife, and he that exalted his gate seeketh destruction. If you glorify yourself, you're only going to be destroyed in the end. Proverbs 25, 27, It is not good to eat much honey. Because you get diabetes, no, no, because it's hindi uh, naman siya. No. So for men to search for their own glory is not glory; it's fake. Matthew twenty three eleven to twelve. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. If you want to be great in the work of the Lord, be humble. Galatians chapter six verse three. If a man think himself to be something. When he is what? Nothing. He deceiveth himself. In the eyes of God, and should be in our eyes, we are nothing. Remember, you see how, how the great men of God describe themselves. I'm wretched. I'm poor. I am guilty. When today, uh, uh, Joel Austin will, I am blessed. I am prosperous. I'm, uh, you know the, the, his famous book, The I Am's? Uh, uh, that I am of yourself. Think that you're blessed, you're powerful, you're all these things, and God will bless you. But it is different from the Word of God. The how uh, the more the the the, uh, the more the it you look at yourself, the greater you are in the eyes of God. That's why the the, the Bible says, "For if a man think of himself to be something, the Bible says the reality is he is nothing. He deceives himself. That's why people around them." when they rebuilt the wall, knew that it was nothing but the work of God. I'm sure that this, uh, we, we know that Israel, and we'll end up here, we know that Israel has been in exile for a long time. But all these people, they have never witnessed in their eyes, in their own eyes, the power and the greatness of God. They've heard the stories. These people were, were saved out of Egypt, and they were so mighty that they were able to conquer this land, conquer that land. And there was a time in the world where people were trembling when they hear the Israelites coming for them because they know that their God is powerful. But during the hundreds of years in exile, these are just stories. The people who are there, unbelievers, were just hearing, these are the mighty people, men of God. But they, they, they are living inside a city with no walls. They are just the laughing stock of that time. They were just people who, every time they tried to build a wall, they stopped. They're powerless people. But I'm sure they've heard the stories. But this time, when the wall was built when the wall was finished they were realizing that all these stories about them were true they really have a great god they really do have a powerful god and we never thought that they were able we be able to do this but instead it was their time the time of the enemies to fear the time of the enemies to realize how great god is and they will fear him and they will respect him from this time on because god decided that they, my people have been in exile for too long I'm going to re revisit them. I'm going to show them my might again by rebuilding this wall through a, through a man that is available named Nehemiah. And if we are that faithful, prayerful, determined, if, if this is what we do, and when we do the work of God here in Cambodia, no matter how impossible it seems, the, the people around us will see the glory of God. The people around us will see the great work of God that is being done through us. That's why we have to keep on working, keep on doing it for the glory of God, not lifting ourselves up, but giving all the, glories, uh, uh, all the glory to the Lord. And, and there are still three verses in this chapter, but I wanted to end on a positive note, on a victory note. They were able to finish the wall in just 52 days. They were able to glorify the Lord. Through the six chapters of trials and trials and challenges and all of these things that thrown at them, they were willing enough to sacrifice their own lives to do this work. Now, the rest of the book here, I, I don't want to finish the series on Nehemiah here, but the rest of the, the book here, it's not just now the people working to build the wall, but now it starts to be the wall working for the people. Because the Lord's 
purpose was really the people, not just the wall. He was building the wall for the people, and now Nehemiah will turn his attention from building the wall to building up the people of God. And if we have been able to build our walls, we have been able to have this foundation, we should now focus on building ourselves up in the mighty work of the Lord and all these things. And this is, uh, this, this is where we're going to take the study uh, from now on. I just wanted to end this uh, preaching in this positive note, that God can work wonders in your lives. If you are like Nehemiah, do these things in our lives. No matter how small you think you are, that's good. Keep thinking of yourself as a small person as nothing and God can do mighty works in your life so let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you for this morning for uh